bop, I say bop. Yes. <clears throat> what was I saying earlier this morning? Uh... Yeah, I can't tell if I'm like burnt out or I'm antsy sometimes. <laughs> like I want to do something, but at the same time I'm like, do I have the energy to? And then like... I get stuck on like, what is it that I actually want to do? What, like we were talking about the other night, like, what, what is going to represent what I want to put out into the world best, and what is going to, is it? It doesn't have to be tangible, but just one of those self-fulfillment hang-ups. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, th I think I think that there's kind of this <clears throat> cultural side of it where, you know, even when we are uh, supposed to be resting, even when our body is extremely tired, yeah, uh, you still feel this need to be doing something. Yeah, right? true. And... And uh, I think a lot of times that manifests as that kind of anxiousness or anxiety that compels you to question whether or not you should be resting at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how, how it happens in me anyway. Yeah. Feeling okay? Uh, or is it just the morning grug? Oh, oh, yes, it's just the morning grog. <laughs> it, it was, you know, last week was rough because of the time change. Yeah. Uh, the European time change happens a week before the American one. So yep. I was off by an hour for a week, which means starting at 4.30 a.m., but this is much nicer. 5.30 a.m. I can handle. <laughs> but for a, a moment in, in time, fleetingly, we were closer together. <laughs> Time-wise, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Although if you, if you move to Norway, then um, we'll be so close. Except then... Except I then I won't be in Norway, I'll be in Finland, so... Oh, Finland, Finland, right, right, right. <laughs> You know, it was one of the Norwegian countries. One of them Scandinavers. I, li listen, I'm... One of them Nordic peoples. I do my best to break as many, like, uh, America fuck yeah stereotypes as I can. But I am... <laughs> I am stereotypically terrible at geography. <laughs> I, I, I had so much brain space allocated to learning the names, locations, and capitals of U.S. states that I did not <laughs> did not uh, learn anything else about the world and where places are. Well, Sweden and Finland are like the nutsack of Scandinavia. <laughs> and Norway is across the way, and that's the little erect part. Well, that's a little dangly bit. That's how I that's how I got it, you know. Let me see if I'm right about that actually. Yeah. Okay. So Finland is like the nutsack and then Sweden and Norway are like the the shaft. Oh. A double from shaft. from from right to left. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. All right, let's see. Let's make a mnemonic device. Uh, so Finland. Finland is the nutsack, huh? Mm -hmm. um, balls. Where the key <laughs> is stored. Yeah. Obviously. Sweet. You just remember Sweden by... It starts with the letter S. It's the shaft. There you go. 
and but uh, that's the thing, right? Norway is the nutsack. No, it's not. Can't be. But it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. If you do Sweden's shaft, then Norway is like Norway nuptials. Using that uh, Shakespearean vote. <laughs> that the the play reading was. Um, yeah. If you if you look at Sweden and Norway as as the dick and like where it splits is the little <laughs> urethral part, it's like they're coming on Denmark and Germany. So there you go. Finally, anyway, if, if if we're looking if we're looking at the border of Norway and Sweden as the urethra, then yeah. doesn't it look like Germany is kind of sounding the Netherlands with Denmark? <laughs> you got it. Now you know your geography. God damn it! <laughs> you won. So so okay. So here's here's the mnemonic device. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Sweden and Norway are getting sounded by Denmark, which means they're into S and M. But it's not S and M; it's S and N. S and N. Sweden and Norway. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Finland is the flabby. Finland the flabby. Yeah. Balzac. Yeah, you got it. That's good. That's a good one. Yeah. Now I just need to. Or device, if you want to call it by its native name, if you want to call it by its Croatian native name, stuff. Yeah, 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 it's true. If you want to call it by its native name, you could say oh, yeah. Suomi Scrotum. Oh God, that's that's uh, <laughs> too much, too much. Let me learn. But it's it true. When um. They say when you're learning, when you're learning a language, uh, it's best to use your mnemonic devices in a native language, mm -hmm. because it's the quickest descriptors you have to connect to those concepts. Yeah, and then over time, the concepts will get connected to the new word. You just have to. Just have to get good, sure those, bro. Well, yeah, you just have to make sure those concepts are as clear and accessible as possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Swami scrope. Is is Finland, uh, Swami in Germany, or is it Finland? Ooh, let me check. My um, my maps app on my phone is maps app in Germany. Tap that map. If you're, um, but, if you're trying to learn a language, I highly recommend putting your phone in a different language. It is really tough. Yeah, but yeah. Worth it. Uh, no, in, in, in German, they are Norwegian, Sweden, and Finland. So That's boring. Same. But makes sense. Uh, German. German's pretty close to English. Vice versa. It is. There are there are quite a few that are different. The most obvious being Deutschland. Mm-hmm. But uh, so then, yeah, where does the etymology of, of German come from? Where does the German people come from in the English speaking world? Yeah, that's actually a fascinating thing. Um. Oh, but before we get onto that subject, I wanted to say what picked me up today is I went to go visit one of my old professors, and uh, oh, nice. they're really, really excited for me about my application to Finland, by the way. And, um, you know, I was telling them about, like, what I was struggling with and how it's like I feel like I, I'm burning out, but at the same time need to find something to do. <laughs> But it's like, you know, it's yeah. like we're, we're both in that end of semester period where it's just like, gotta get through it. And 
like at this point there's no way to change things there's no way to start stuff because it's just like it's gonna end so soon and so it's just like kind of defeating but kind of relieving at the same time you know i didn't get to do all the stuff i wanted to do this semester for my job but at the same time there's other opportunities around the corner and also holidays which will be nice mm. and then i felt self-fulfilled because like I decided, fuck it. Uh, I miss the summer, <laughs> so I'm I'm playing Boku no Natsuyasumi too again, uh, and I really, really need to finish that game. And the spooky season's over, so I have no excuse not to revisit my summer adventures and actually get get that summer adventure I deserve. So it felt I feel pretty good now. Good. Yeah, I, I guess it's always it's always a little harder to. Uh start big start like searching for your purpose when you have a bunch of shit to wrap up <laughs> mm. it's also like the the change of the season right hi con hello hello con. okay i wasn't sure if i was no i, I said a quick, quick hello okay. did you vote tissy, for jeff tissy. today no i didn't vote today okay poor poor con locked in his uh, idiot stronghold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a... Uh... Man. Yeah, y'all gonna have to forgive me a little bit. I think I woke up too fast or something. Oof. Okay. But, Did you take yeah, a nap I... after Crundle's raid? I tried. Okay. And I think that was, I think that was my mistake. I was oh, okay. trying, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a person that can go to sleep. Yeah, don't force you know, when, it. when I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to just pass out. That, that's that's when I get the best sleep. Pass the gas. Oh yeah, uh, preferably uh, both at the same time. Mhm. Mm oh. So um, I discovered something interesting recently. Uh, there is a framework. Of personality traits that um, people tend to use in interpersonal relationship sort of stuffs. Uh, okay. And and basically, basically, it's how well do you perform in a group, right? Mm -hmm. And the five five personality traits are being open to new experiences being conscientious in other words how organized you are uh extroversion how extroverted or solitary you are uh agreeableness friendliness and neuroticism and, hmm. and it was fascinating because neuroticism is like the only negative one and i've been talking on blue sky about this but there's like not a yeah i've seen a little bit of there's this. not a there's not a direct positive synonym for like what's the opposite of nervousness and sensitivity right mm -hmm. not nervous not neurotic uh there's a video i watched the other day um that kind of brought up the topic and the guy was like the best i can come up with is lo-fi Right, mental mental calmness versus mental second guessing. So, second guessing does that go for? You said something about nervousness. Yeah. Does that does that go with that? Because I don't know. I think the opposite of nervousness would just be what calm. Well, but calmness is more so. So neuroticism is kind of the how how what is your tendency to have strong negative emotions or what is what is your like um what it, what is your stability emotionally right except neuroticism is the negative like neuroticism is emotional instability Ooh, i thought neuroticism was like a control thing. 
like uh, demon specifically or stuff like that. Actually, that's so that's um, more covered in openness to experience and conscientiousness. Um, so openness to experience would be like you don't want if you have low openness, you don't want to experience new things. And if you have high, if you have high enough conscientiousness, then you like refuse to break your routine, right? Yeah. So there's so, overlap there. A little bit. I don't know. Like, <laughs> if I could choose like a uh, another negative to be the opposite of neurotic, wouldn't it be like disorderly? Um, I don't know. This is I, this is this is the uh, this is the debate, right? <laughs> That's the opposite of neurotic. Interestingly, um, I had someone uh, say that in their experience, neurotic is a synonym synonym for neurodivergent, which mm. Uh, mm. is not is not a thing in the the framework the person the big five personality framework but certainly i can understand the colloquial use being more like that yeah yeah i mean it, it sounds kind of like one of those things where it's like uh every person who's neurotic isn't uh wait every person who's neurotic isn't neurodivergent but every person that's neurodivergent is also neurotic. Whatever you know, that kind of to a degree, to a degree, perhaps something like that. But like There's everything is everything about this is like to a degree, right? It depends on the group. It depends on like how you interact with that group, and maybe you just haven't found that right group. And like when those traits align, and like they, you feel like you found a group that brings out the best in you. Then it's like you know that's that's a good thing. Absolutely. Just yeah. I was actually, uh, I was actually talking to a friend about um, a class he took, a comedy class, a comedy improv class, right? And there was a trans girl in the class, and in the class they talked a lot about, you know, are these jokes appropriate? Did we cross boundaries? And of course the trans girl's lived Shit. experience meant that she was a lot more sensitive to boundaries and gender and topics like that, right? And uh, the rest of the class had to adapt to create a you know, a safe constructed space for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was like, you know, maybe if there was a group of trans people who did improv together you know they wouldn't even have to bring up these issues because everyone would kind of understand uh what topics they they didn't want to deal with true and, i also and, and, yeah go on and, and 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 that that kind of relates back to like maybe neuroticism neuroticism or neurodivergence right I don't know, I don't it's, know. yeah it's all relative to your experience so if you had a community of neurotic people you would just you'd end up having a community that maybe is a lot like gentler with each other like interpersonal interactions are a little bit more empathetic that sort of thing like they would all adapt to creating a community that functions even though you know they are all very emotionally sensitive right? you know it brings up it brings up an interesting point because i'm surprised that humility isn't one of the uh hmm. the traits so i feel like True. you have to have enough to like humble yourself or like not like to the point of like self-deprecation, but like you know, make fun of yourself a little bit, in like your situation, and just just because like that's part of lived experience too. It's like, well, yeah, that's me, you know, and just like owning it, you know. Uh, because I find that that is that is a huge 
part of like my friend groups, right? It's funny. It's funny you bring that up because uh, in like different different studies, mm -hmm. uh, they said humility should be one of these. Aha! Uh -huh. And uh, they created a six big six model the sixth sense uh, yeah and actually actually what's interesting is uh <laughs> oh, this is fucking fascinating so in the big six model they replace neuroticism with emotionality hmm which is <laughs> that's better i i think it's better because it's more like positive so you can like have the all the traits go positively i've just never never heard that word before emotionality however here's the fucking hilarious part when i click on the word emotionality on wikipedia it leads me to the neuroticism <laughs> page <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't think that matches up neuroticism is like a specific flavor of like yeah. emotional yeah. you know and, you know, even the humility part, I feel like there's a there's some overlap mm -hmm. with a couple of other things that you That's true. mentioned on the original five. So I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's Definitely. almost like splitting hairs at this point. Yeah, and and then you know, with personality models, there's always going to be overlap and gaps and people who claim they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because, like, at the at the university I'm working at right now, there's a huge exhibit on social on uh, pseudoscience in uh, a wing of the library, and like, you know, you have your water therapies and whatever, and one of them is actually like about personality traits and like astrology, and uh, it's just interesting, you know, because how that all links into like people tying it to eugenics. And, um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, physiognomy and stuff like that. The other pseudosciences is, it's just interesting how, like, a lot of, like, the astro astrological and personality traits stuff is kind of born out of that kind of craze. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. And it always like irked me to no end being in theater, even up until like you know a few years ago when I was doing screen tests for um, student actors. You know, any room you walk into, they're talking about astrology. They're like, oh, you know, that's so Gemini because this and that. It's like, <laughs> stop fucking profiling me. <laughs> like, I I don't understand the stereotypes and like I just I. I don't get the hype behind personality tests. It's like, it's interesting. It's a passing fancy, you know, I mean, but like, I think, I think, it, I just I feel think like people just... adhere to it way too much, especially like stuff like Myers Briggs, where it's like, you know, just because it is so in depth doesn't mean that it's like, it's the gospel. Well, I think, I think it's one of those things where everybody <laughs> for all of history yeah. has been trying to, um, create a a, a, a yeah. universal language by a which convenient describe, answer yeah a, a, a convenient answer to yeah. how to interact with people yeah and how to and, categorize themselves right yeah and astrology uh you know astrology being related to star patterns and charts and whatever mm -hmm. i mean it's just an arbitrary starting point, right? Mm -hmm. It's just it's, yep. it's just saying it's just saying why don't we just pick categories and then try to define the people within them? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's no it's no different than saying like, oh well, some people are introverts and extroverts, and how introverted or extroverted you are is a super important factor in in who you are. It's like it doesn't have to be. 
And also, this All is right. how many bumps you have on your skull, and that means you're a freak. <laughs> the classification of introvert and extrovert these days. It's like, <laughs> what metric are we going off of? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah like it's it's totally it. situational, right? Depending on pretty much everyone. Pretty much everyone I talk to nowadays is like, oh yeah, I'm an ambivert. I'm like, I'm so it just doesn't, it just it just doesn't matter. It just it just we 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 came up with this particular scientific sounding yeah. thing, and it just. It doesn't really matter because everybody needs social time and everybody needs alone time. <laughs> yeah, Why that's, choose that's... a gender identity is what it all comes down to, right? God, yes. Who cares? <laughs> Just be be a better person. Be Start who you there. is. Thank you. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. Beep boop beep. Uh, I was about to say something, I don't know if I should. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to Isaac telling me about the etymology of where the word German comes from in the English language. Oh yeah, fuck, I had a, a really good article pulled up on that. Uh, so, Germany... Um, Germany actually has tons of names. Um, and, and of course, it's not just like the German like the the dutch version of of german right mm -hmm. uh yeah like where these come from historically and why yeah there are five different etymologies for the name of germany um so in old high german um the german people called themselves the Deutsch, and that meant that they were from Deutschland. So they they call themselves, we are the Deutsch, we are from Deutschland, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In um, Latin, uh, the German people, the, the people who invaded Italy and Rome, were called the Germanic tribes. And mm. thus in Italian and a lot of languages that inherited uh, Latin and Romance language verbs, such as English, it is based on Germania, which is German. Um, however, in French, the, f the people who lived in French didn't know them as the Germanic tribes. They knew them as the Alemanni tribes. Mm. Uh, and yep, and so they and so in France and a lot of places that have French background, including Spain, Portugal, Africa, the Middle East, the, they call it something based on Aleman. Is that where like Aryan comes from too? Sure, probably. <clears throat> I Meanwhile, the word, the word Aryan came from like ancient India or something like that. Anyway, continue. Meanwhile, we'll <laughs> meanwhile, um, in Eastern Europe, um, the Slavic word for the Proto-Slavic word for stranger was nemet, and Eastern Europeans thought that the Western Europeans were strangers. And so in all of Eastern Europe, it is, um, in Poland, it's uh, Niemcy. And hmm. Never heard of that. All of, all of Eastern Europe ha calls Germany by a version of that name. And finally, finally, the first people from the German area to make it to Finland were from the Saxon tribe, which is a North North German tribe way from yeah, way back yeah, yeah. in the old times, and so in Finland and uh, like one other country and little regions around Finland, uh, they call Germany Saxa. Hmm. So basically. 
<laughs> and there are actually there are a bunch of names that we don't actually know the origin of. There are even more names for Germany, but it seems like the Germans called themselves Deutsch. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. they are Deutschland. But every country that those Central Europeans interacted with in the medieval ages called them a different thing. And that is why Germany has so many names in different Yeah, it languages. also sounds like it's based on like their reputation around those parts where they interacted <sighs> in. So Yeah, and that's 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 something I think is definitely a contributing factor. Mm-hmm. You know, the Alemanni tribe and the Saxon tribe and the Germanic tribes were not the same people. <laughs> yeah, it's like when people say the Native Americans as if they're one body. They're not. Yeah. Yeah, I like First Nation as a, a moniker for them, but mm. they they definitely didn't consider themselves a single culture like American yeah. lies. Oh, no, absolutely not. That, that was how a lot of the early settlers uh, managed to get a lot of the land, was just start picking teams. Yep. Go to one tribe, take out another tribe, you know, using these old uh, these old rivalries, you know, to their yep. advantage. Yep. And everybody just thinks, oh, why didn't the Native Americans just push out all the settlers? Because a lot of the Native American tribes hated each other. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same story for, uh, what was his name, Hernan Cortez when he got to South America. <laughs> uh, he got all the uh, the surrounding tribes to uh, you know fuck off the Aztecs in a week. So yep. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, even in like the early modern era, like Germany's had so many different names. Like it was Prussia, like Holy Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. Like Germany is just like the what the most recent one. Yeah. But I want to know who who is this father they keep talking about when they call themselves the Fatherland. Fatherland, yeah. Well, ask too many about that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch categories and we're gonna boot into the game. But uh, I think we should probably all introduce again. Uh, welcome back, everybody, once more to the Digital Dojo, where we kind of cooperate and meditate on the Vidya and you other. Can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Mm. Yeah. At the hotel dusk. Is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're driving at? That's what I'm driving at. All right. Well, that's not true. We can get kicked out. Like yeah, we can. We, we can get kicked out any time <laughs> yeah. if we just harass Dunning enough. Yeah, pretty much any moment we can we can leave if we wanted to. But yeah, we can just say, <laughs> hey, I choose. found this. We can just be like, hey, I found this cash on my toilet. Okay, you go leave. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, we have the. Uh, the ticket to jail. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah, in our a... suitcase. Early simple Would y'all like to to make your uh, customary introduction? Sure. Yo, yo, yo. It's the Lyrical Clerical and Chimerical VTuber, Isaac Anzu. Uh, uh, struggling, working, finding new problems to solve every day on the... Uh, on the dream of being a uh, variety show host VTuber. But, uh, you know, we get there. <laughs> yeah. I tested my VR Eventually. stuff today, by the way, and it's working good. So mm, mm. Nice. I've been working Look. on... Um, I've been working on the intro. The show intro. Nice. Fucking uh, beautiful. Beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, please let me know, like, once again, if there's anything I could do, uh, more. I, I will. I need, I need something. <laughs> kind of chomping once, at the I've, bit for a little bit of something. I think, I think the problem with doing big collabs and stuff like that is that people don't know what you are doing until you yeah. start doing it. Exactly. Right? It's hard for me to describe the vibe that I'm going for. Like, Khan has helped me with a couple things, mostly because I've shown him a bunch of stuff that I'm working on. 
uh, and and you and Luke Moff have been helping with ideas, but mm -hmm. until a variety show is done, it'll be hard for people to say like, oh, I have something that would work with that vibe. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Just got to get a first draft out there. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been being selfish for the past uh, month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> This whole month is just me being selfish. Good. I'm, uh, I'm trying to finish up uh, Old Man in the Sea. Uh, I started reading that last month just as a, uh, just as kind of a one-off thing, just to see how it would go. And I was like, I want to finish this book, so I might finish it next week. You know, it's it's not a very long book, but I did go to a public school, so it might take me a little bit longer to know the people. I like you reading know, slow. Flat. Honestly, I'm glad for me, I like, that. I like taking my time with the book. Yeah, and uh, and other selfish things, I, I'm still doing Fallout Dust, mm -hmm. even though like I'm pretty. That that's probably like the the lowest tier tier series I've ever done. <laughs> 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 feels so dirty doing it. It feels so as long as you're having fun. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I am. Like oh well. Yeah, well, that's that's the big question, ain't it? Like, because I, I stream to be able to talk with people, and whenever I'm doing anything else, that's when the conversation dries up. So, I think I think that uh, so I watched a video where this guy made a really solid argument for uh, living your life by solving the equation, always, always, always solving the equation for the having the most fun possible, right? Yeah, uh, and I think I think that's especially true when it comes to art. Uh, like if you're if you are trying to make something that's poetic or profound or or cool or whatever, then you're always going to be butting up against other people's definitions of that. But if yeah. you're trying to have the most fun, then that's a very subjective and personal metric, and you can kind of really hang on to that and really find like what is the most fun yeah for <laughs> me it's fun. like the the thing i've been struggling most with and i think i talked i spoke about this a little earlier we don't have to linger on it but um is uh me as an individual as an artist is hard mm -hmm. to get invested in myself mm -hmm. uh when it comes to a collaborative aspect it uh it it's just the it must be the theater background in me cuz well, i just i i really enjoy that but in a sense every individual project can become a collaborative project as long as you show it off and get feedback from it and i kind of have to get over that hump yeah I, the act of viewing art is yeah. part of the collaboration of art mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the emotional collaboration because the example I always point to is like, you know, look at the front of a book, right? Who Whose names are written there besides the authors? It's usually someone they're thinking that is in part of making that book possible, right? So... Oh, yeah. First, every page, individual, of, first page of every book is the dedication, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. every... No project is possible without someone else in your life influencing you in some way. Um... So yeah, I just I just gotta get over that hump and be like, "Fuck it," I get over I like myself. To, <laughs> I like to think of my past self as a different person. So yeah. when I was putting together, I did a big music project a couple years ago, and when I was putting together the music, I would do each step separately, mm -hmm. and then it felt a lot like, you know, first. I'm writing a drum loop. Second, oh, okay, I have this drum loop. How do I turn that into like a, a, a beat, right? Mm -hmm. And then third, I have a beat. How do I write lyrics on top of that? How do I write, how do I use this sample in relation to it? And I kind of, I kind of thought of the previous step as something someone else did, right? The game was to make the best thing possible with the the thing I'd been given. Mm -hmm. 
even though past me was the the one who gave it to me. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, I mean you're you're a different you every day. To be honest. So. Yeah, I've been thinking about that since you said something about it a little while ago, Isaac. Um, <laughs> I think it was a little bit after the. Uh, it was either a little bit before or after this archive went down. You said something about doing stuff, revisiting stuff because you're a different person now than you were when you first visited it. Mm-hmm. I'm a different me every second. Put put me away. Lock me up. I'm going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glitching out like the Spider-Verse. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> hopping multiverses every every millisecond. <laughs> Yeah, that's when, that's when they take you away and put you in the uh, the nice warm jacket in the nice yeah. soft room. So thanks for the advice, Isaac. <laughs> I'm I'm I, I kind of want to just like chill in the the pillow room. <laughs> Honestly, comfy. You want to you want to in there? Let's let's all go and have uh, tea time in there and and bring our plushies oh, yeah. and yeah, we'll be cool. <sighs> We're all We're dresses. A mad here. The tea time of the madness. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how we win the game. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about mm-hmm. y'all, but being <laughs> being in the that's where we form the commune in the padded cell. Being in my room all day, if it was yeah. just all pillows, wall to wall pillows, they just bring me food every day. I ain't got to go to work. That sounds become good to me. become the cabinet of Caligari you were always meant to be. There we oh, go. Yeah. Hell yeah. The inmates would really be running the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> what they what they what they don't tell you is after like three days of sensory deprivation, uh you get unplugged from the matrix. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which may or may not be a good thing, depending on who you are. Alright, Khan, did you uh, uh connect to Oh yeah, let me Hit the button. There we and go. then I spun earlier, and I am I am the uh, the hide tonight. The hide. The hide. Oh, nice. Also, I wanted to the say hi, dubious. I'm sorry. Hi, dubious. I'm sorry your education wasn't uh, able to uh, fit your needs, which is a, a all too common problem.